I'm happy to the boss I have now. We have so many The thing that gave me so much faith in him is the same thing that made Harry and I best friends 25 years ago. Folks, uh, I told you all the good things that are happening that we got a long way to go. Things are still very bad. My grandpa Finney, who was great Pennsylvania where I was raised, used to say, honey, when the guy up in Manuka, which is a suburb of Scranton, is out of work, it's an economic slowdown. When your brother's in law is out of work, it's a recession. When you're out of work, it's a depression. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a depression for tens of thousands of Nevadans. It's a depression for millions of Americans. Millions of Americans who played by the rules, worked hard, believed in their country, did everything they could, and through no fault of their own, find themselves in the midst of a depression. Their depression. My dad had a great expression. He said, Joe, remember, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about dignity. Dignity. The dignity has been stripped from so many women and men in this country. We have an overwhelming obligation. Barack expresses it differently than I do, and Harry expresses it differently than Barack and I do. But the one thing we all know is that the longest walk a parent ever has to make is up a short flight of stairs to his child's bedroom to say, honey, I'm sorry. She's not going to be able to go back to St. Catharines or Cooper Public School. Or you're not going to be able to play in the Little League team next year. You're not going to be able to sing in the choir in church. Mommy lost her job. Daddy lost his job. i got to go find another one. Well, honey, I know you think we own the house, honey, but the bank owns the house. And they've changed what I have to do, and Daddy can't afford the payments. So I know it's hard to understand, baby, but, but we're going to have to we're gonna have to move. My dad made that walk in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at my grandpa's house, with our bedroom, I remember it vividly. He said, pal, he used to call me Jerry. He said, Jim, Dad's going to have to move. We're all, but don't worry. I'll be home every weekend. I'm going to move down to Wilmington. That's where Uncle Frank is. He says he can get me a job down there. When I get enough money, I'm going to bring you, Mom, and Val, and Jimmy. We're going to have a nice, we're going to be a nice place. But it's going to take a while. I'll be home on the weekends. So take care of Mommy, and, and uh, uh, don't make Grandpa mad. <laughs> I think I'm joking or not. That was the conversation. But he said, it's going to be okay. I believe it. And it turned out okay a year later. At the beginning, the way back. But I'll tell you what. What I didn't understand when I grew older, as hard as that was for our family, how difficult that walk must have been for my father. A proud man. kids and tell his wife, hey, I don't have a job. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the thing that Harry and I know, and Barack knows, that we will not have done what we have to do until all those people in the back who lost their homes, all those families in the back who lost their jobs, those mothers and fathers able to look in the eyes of their kids and say, honey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be okay. But it will not be okay until we get these jobs back. And ladies and gentlemen, we have no greater partner in this fight 
and Harry Reid. I trust people who are smart. We need them. I like people who have a heart. But I travel with people who have a gut. And I tell you, your president has the gut for this. Your president has the grit for this. Your majority leader has the guts and the grit. This is going to be a grind. But we are on our way. Keep the faith as my grandfather would say. And as I walk out the door, my grandma would yell, no, Joey, spread it. <laughs> We're going to do this.